Welcome to this little session about Shohin Forest. Yes, you can make a Shohin Forest of seedlings that have been collected today, so they have still have fresh roots. The best possible timing for doing a small Shohin size forest or replanting bonsai like this, styling them the first time when you're collecting uh, a deciduous tree, is in autumn or early winter or wait until spring just before the leaves start to open. Then there is the best energy in spring just before spring and new growth will flush. But you can do this as well in the dormancy season where the trees are sleeping and the roots are have stored enough energy and will wait until spring to begin to grow. It's a perfect time to do that. I have uh, the luck that the soil around here is sandy, not for normal gardens. It, this is not very lucky because it is, it is uh, too drainy. But for making seedlings in the forest or in the garden, it's perfect simply because the root system will be this fine feathery root system and not uh, very elongated roots that are difficult to dig up. And these small seedlings self-sown in the small forest around here is perfect to make a Shohen future bonsai forest or just a single bonsai. But today I would like to make a forest from these Asa Campestra that is a local variety of the maple and they are perfect for Shohen. So I will make two different examples on how we make a forest in a small style. What you should look for is trees that have enough of these fine feathery roots if you are not growing them yourself by seeds in pots so you have it controlled. I found these in this sandy soil and there's plenty of these small feathery roots that is the most important part of securing a good root system that is the small feathery fine roots that takes up nutrients and water. The bigger ones, and I'll see if I can find one, here, that is the tap root. It's a bigger and uh, more solid root. It will not take up water by itself. It's only the fine roots like thin hair that will do that. And the tap root we have to cut simply to stop it from growing downwards. There will not be room for that in the pot and it has no need as a bonsai. So why is it there? It is there to secure the tree in the ground when it's growing in the wild. It's simply growing downwards to fasten the tree in the ground so it stands secure in winds and stormy weather. But we don't need that and I will just cut that off and keep as much as possible as the fine feathery roots uh, in a narrow distance so it can be potted. I have a few pots that we can use for the planting of this small forest. One is a little deeper than the other and it depends how many roots I am able to save to secure the health of the trees. And the reason why I put them directly into the pot at once instead of pre-growing them in the bigger pot is simply because I want these small feathery roots. And there's the tap root going off. Being able to fuse together and stay, sit very closely and they have to be grown in the pot for this in order to succeed. Of course you can put them in a little bit of a bigger pot, but I think it's best to put them directly in the pot they have to stay in and develop slowly. It is not the meaning that these trunks uh, shall evolve in any way uh, by thickening. They are in the size I want them in and putting them in the pot will make them stay almost in that size for years. The most important thing is to find something uh, of different sizes and these seedlings are, it's a loose guess, between one and three years old. And this gives different thicknesses and you can see I'm able to put this very close together so it will be a natural small forest. And of course these are way too long to be a showhead, they have to be around the maximum of 20 centimeters but I will shorten this when I am dealing with pruning the roots, I will also adjust some of the heights. But let's start pruning some roots so we have something to work with. And I have collected enough so I have something to choose from. And the rest will go in parts and save for later for different purposes. 
So it's very important to locate where there are enough roots and just shorten them slightly, keeping enough of these hairy roots to grow a new tree. And I'll take up the tops here. So I have a flat, almost flat base with roots, enough roots to support growth in spring. That's one. And this one I have already done. This is a little bit too long. It's okay. And I am sorting them by the larger ones and taking the smaller ones apart. And here it's about locating enough roots at the same height so it's able to be put in a pot. And all the time analyzing each of the collected trees, of their potential. Here it's clearly it has an odd long these tap roots, probably growing around a, a piece of rock or a some soil that was too heavy or a piece of wood and it tries to find its way around it. Here I just shorten it and have a good amount of small feathery roots all at the same height almost. This is a small one, it goes in the small category. Now roots are cut and next thing to do is preparing a pot. I have a small round pot that I would like to make a small group planting in and I have a little big, bit of bigger pot that I think would be very nice for a forest too. So I'll try to settle with these two. Here I have prepared the pot with a net with a mesh inside and secure it with some wire and I have to do the same here so the soil doesn't go through here. And we need enough wires to fasten the trees properly in the pot. It covers the buttons. And then I will use some wire to put through here. Now there's three set of wires and I will put them aside so it's possible to put soil in here. I put a small layer of more drain soil in the bottom, but not much because these roots really need a lot of concentrated soil so they will not dry out. And here comes the tricky part, arranging such small trees in such a small pot. And then we'll start selecting a main tree. I find this could be it and it has to be shortened because it's much way too large and I'm simply selecting a new top, not going in detail with pruning, just shorten it. So here will be a new leader for future. Be sure that these do not have the same height, this will be the main tree and I might have to shorten this at a later point. But if we arrange just have to shorten a few of these roots so there's room enough. This is not bad at all as a main tree. And what is important when you are arranging a forest like this, even this small size, is you're having a main tree and a secondary tree that makes the formation of one or two groups in the pot, even if it is a small one like this have different heights and different thickness of trunks simply to make it interesting and looking like a natural forest. It is also important that we have some space in between the trees so we add some depth having if you view into a forest it's about having the largest tree in the front and smaller at the back that gives you a feeling of looking into a forest or standing in the forest looking at the trees. If you do the opposite you have smaller trees at the front and at the back, then you will have a different feeling of tree, trees and a small forest seen at a distance. So, depending on how you arrange your trees, you will give a different feeling of different kinds of forest. This part will have room enough for several trees, so I will begin to arrange them. This will be the main arrangement, and I will place all the other trees according to this and have different distances as 
far as possible. Seven trees are now arranged in a formation. So I have a center tree that is the largest one and all other trees are different sizes. These have to be adjusted within the growing seasons in the next years to complete the image of a small forest. Finally, I will add some mosses. Normally I would not do that at this time of the year, but simply to ensure the health of the surface roots here, fragile roots, I need something to keep it moist and mosses have the ability to add a lot of oxygen in between and keeping some moisture around the fine roots. Therefore I use the mosses to cover up and at the same time they can help holding these small pieces in place. Mosses are now added and I think I have a future beautiful small shohin forest. And I say future because this is of course some small sticks in the pot right now but within four or five years this will mature and develop. There's a lot of new buds coming out here and it will mature and looks like a small mini forest. I have done a little bit of pre-work on another one a few days ago and if you notice the difference of these two types, that is the right one here for you, is a little bit, bit more straight in position and I have grouped the trees a little bit more in one side of the pot to reassemble the same style as the pot. This pot has a little bit more movement and therefore all the trees have adjusted, are adjusted the same way with more movement and in a different position in the pot. It is exact same specimens we're talking about, the Acer Campestra, the same Yamadori hunting in the forest with small seedlings and two a little bit different results. One can be used for a little bit more formal display, it's also smaller, and this one can be used with more movement for a show and display that needs this. Next thing is just watering and taking care and watch how it develops in spring and I will get back to that so you can follow these forests and how they will develop. small a group planting can we actually make. Here I have a small round pot made by a Danish potter called, named uh, Elisabeth Ludvigsen. And uh, this small round pot will fit very well for a small group planting or a small forest illustration. So I have selected some of these seedlings collected in nature with a little bit of movement and especially some that have a root system that is still dense enough to fit in a little pot and just adjust it further. But there's a lot of fine feathery roots here to take up water and they are almost like cuttings. And I select something with some movement and place it in the pot so we have a feeling of movement that fits with the pot. That is something that is important to think about when you're making a group planting or whenever you're planting in a bonsai or a shohin bonsai in a pot. How does the pot look? Does it have uh, soft corners when you need trees that have soft movement? If you have a very rectangular pot, then place the trees, if it is a forest, more like in a straight and formal way than if it was soft and round. But first I will apply some wires into this so we can hold the trees in position. Next, adding some soil, and maybe you notice that I do not use any kind of extra drainage layer in here because this pot is so small that it will drain naturally by evaporation, and it is a gritty material already, so that would not be a problem. 
there will be no water locking. The biggest problem will be it's drying out so fast, and that's the problem with small pots and show him. Next step is to find the trees that will fit in this kind of pot and find a centerpiece that have a little bit of thickness and a secondary tree that also have a little bit of movement and then it's about trying to place them. I will not anchor them at first. Find some nice curves and movement in here. Before I add any soil on top of this, I secure that as many of these small feathery roots are placed securely in the bottom of the pot so they will not dry out. It actually seems like I am ending up with seven trees in this small pot. Now it's time to add some soil and it's very important that I use my time to firmly get the soil in between all of these small roots so they do not dry up in air dry out in air pockets and I go very gently with a chopstick that is softened at the end and just push it in between every kind of small space that must that may be present down below the soil surface and after that I will apply some mosses to keep it moist and place this in the winter shelter at once because I don't want these fragile small tender roots to be exposed to any frost. Not, that is not necessary. As long as they are protected from frost and wind they will recover and be ready for the spring season to grow again. This is delicate work and much different from replanting very large bonsai. Then we arrange some mosses to keep it moist and this can be dried mosses as well. I'm just using fresh mosses because they are available. The roots in here will fuse together with time and so will this be much more easy to transplant after some years when it's is acting more like one tree and not seven small separate trees. All trees are positioned now and the next thing I will do is just adjusting the height of some of these. And this means that I will take first the centerpiece, the biggest tree, if you can say that with a small showing piece like this, and adjust, adjust the height of this. And the next one would be like here. I'm leaving a small butt to continue growing. And then we have this one. I want to grow. Mm -hmm.